Hi, this is Bravo21. I'm a glider pilot and sim developer, and this is an update for the B21 Task Planner version 2. Right, it's a significant update of version 2. The Flight Planner still does what version 1 did, which is it's designed for as easily as possible creating VFR flight plans for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And you can do this by clicking on a map. So say you pick Coventry Airport, which I'm doing in honor of a YouTuber called Flying Feston. Uh, I don't know him, he doesn't really know me, but he does produce some excellent uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator videos, if you haven't seen them. So anyway, and they always seem to have some kind of a Coventry uh, locality, so I think he must be from around there. He sounds like it too. So um, starting Coventry, let's say we're going to go over this over here somewhere, up to uh, out here in the country, down in Northampton, back to about there, and then back into Coventry, pen, oops, pen to task. Okay, so I've created this circular route. It does have a Microsoft airport at each end, which is important for what it's worth. In this case, it's the same airport. And because it's aimed towards uh, gliding tasks, it has features in it that you don't need if you're not worried about gliding, but you can, you can kind of say, well, this particular waypoint is actually the start of gliding race and it will define a start box for you, which will get picked up. It's encoded into the waypoint name. It will get picked up by the instruments in the glider. And uh, waypoint four here, normally these things would have different names. In fact, I'm gonna call it finish. Okay, and uh, check the finish box. And normally what we'd have on a start is a maximum start, oops, a maximum altitude at the start, let's say 4,000 feet. Okay, so see this, so, um, uh, no, God, I meant to make this a little bit better. That would be called start. Okay, and uh, waypoint two, waypoint three, and then back to finish. These waypoints would have names as well. We'll kind of come on to that maybe a little bit at the end. Okay, so it still does what it's always done. Uh, it does that perfectly well. If I reset everything, you can also do the same thing. Um, so look here, simply by dragging and dropping a Microsoft Flight Simulator task, uh, flight plan file, PLN or TSK. Okay, so I just dragged and dropped, where it said drop files here, I just, you couldn't see me do it, but I just dropped the file that existed. So this is a real flight plan um, that I've used to regularly uh, test the gliders that uh, you know I'm involved with developing. Okay, and then you could edit this one if you want to. Well, the most important new feature in version two is that version two of B21 Task Planner uh, now actually supports track log files. I'm gonna drag and drop one back onto this drop files here box. This is a GPX file, but it could have been an IGC file and I drop it. There you go. And, and you can see now it's picked up the track log that was in that file. To create that track log, you need, you can do it with the Albatross, you know, soaring utility, particularly with glider pilots on flightsim.2. TO, there's something I use, which is a add-on called Sim Flight Path. Uh, but this talk isn't really about how do you generate the files. This shows how you can you can have a look at them. Okay, so it's going to display on here, and then down here you have this kind of classic time altitude graph, which you used to get from a barograph graph that you carry along in your in your glider. And I can illustrate if as I move the mouse, I'm just sliding the mouse along. I'm not pushing any buttons. Um, you can see it moving the glider, if you can see the glider moving in the, in the map page up here uh, with it. And at the same time, if I come over here, this area here is updating with the point reading of where the mouse is. So it's saying here I am at 3,060 feet, and then here I am at 4,544 feet. Okay, and uh, one additional feature you can do here is you can take a thermal, drag the mouse from one end to the other and let go. And then if you look in this corner, um, I've just got to improve the formatting. Something, uh, you know, a slight bug has kind of crept in where I've formatted this text quite right. But it's showing I was circling for six minutes and 32 seconds. I gained 1,816 feet. Um, I drifted two kilometers from start to finish. And what it's doing, this is all based on where this particularly 
the zoomed in area starts and where does it finish? That's the way this thing works, right? So you can do it for any area you like. And it's showing me my climb for gliders. It's important. It's showing the climb rate. I think that's just something like 2.9 knots, but I'm going to fix that. So by the time you get to see this, it's already online 2.13. Uh, by the time you see it, it's going to be 2.14 because I'm going to fix this particular little formatting bug here and uh, change the version number. OK, so you can zoom in and you, you can kind of test things. Something in reality that you would tend to do if if I'm moving the cursor by moving this around, if you can see I'm thermaling there just in this section. Typically, what you'd actually do is you'd zoom in, you'd have a look at it. I'm going to move the cursor back to there and that is telling me where I'm going to drag to and now I'm dragging the cursor. I'm actually watching the plane on the map now. Did I get to there? Boink. There you go. So now I'm, I'm sort of perfectly happy. This zoomed in area by definition is that thermal. OK, so you can get the sort of stats for the thermal exactly what was your climb rate, which is a very useful thing to know for glider pilots. Uh, but also if I zoom out, you can actually do the same thing for a glide. If I pick, let's say, oop, let's say I go from, this isn't really meaningful, so I go from there, oops, from there to see that glide there, from there to there. Um, because now there is no gain of height, I lost 1,003 feet. Um, this is telling me a glide ratio of 51 to 1. All right, so that is quite useful for testing a glider, but if you're going to test a glider with it, you have to do it with zero wind, you kind of delete the wind layer and you change the, you'd use no clouds at all and set the temperature to relatively low and set the time in Microsoft Flight Simulator to something like 7 a.m. And that's the only way you can kind of guarantee you're going to get stable air without bits, because Microsoft is working, or Sobo is working on generating rising air. And that, if you, if you've got to be able to turn that off to, to try and do an effective glide ratio measurement of a glider. But if you've done all of those things and then you just fly in a straight line for a minimum of 20 kilometers, you just glide in a straight line, keeping the speed the same, then this analysis that I've just done here is really quite handy. And then you can look at that glide ratio and ballpark, is it the right kind of number? Okay, because it's very easy to create a sim glider and have the glide performance just off by a million miles. You know, it's a lot of work you've got to uh, look at it. So it's a useful test there. OK, so those are the key features. Um, and so far, if I hit reset, uh, that was with a single glider. Now, in fact, what I can do is I can highlight, I've got them in the same directory, multiple track logs and the same flight plan. And this time I'm going to drag all of them as a bunch of files and drop them. You could do the same thing by clicking the choose files button and this time it's loaded i'm going to do hide the chart uh it's loaded all of those files okay you don't have to have the map you can show or hide those tracks that are shown on the map and i'll show you the last feature which is so not only is it it's doing the it's doing the same calculation i mentioned before but it's doing it for all of the track logs and it's kind of saying oh and this is the color coding i don't think i mentioned that but black red green a brownie color if i show the map tracks again those are the same colors and when you look at the gliders those are the same colors and when it runs out of plain colors uh just single colors then what it does is it uses a pair of colors it'll make sense when you when you do it uh, you'll have a glider that might be white and green and then that the bar here will be white and green and the bar there will be white and green what i'm going to show you now though is these four flights were all flown by me, but at different times on different days for its worth. So if you want to replay them all together, you have to synchronize them in some way. Otherwise it'd be meaningless. You know, you'd be waiting a day for the next flight to start. Then you'd have to, you know, this clock would be ticking along. And so the technique to doing that, which goes back a long time, this idea that you could, it's called maggot racing. Oh, we used to be called maggot racing, uh, you know, sort of animations of gliders around a flight is you can synchronize the starts. Okay. And what that means is an offset is calculated for the clock of each of these different gliders so that whatever the clock says, they hit the exact same time as they go through that start line. And we use that to then animate them. And you'll see it happen when I click the play button here, you'll see those flights start animating. And there you go. They just went through the start lane line simultaneously. I shall speed it up 
a bit and they're going quite quickly. Now my favorite is this one. Um, of these four gliders, only if you look at the list on the left, only one of them is ballasted. The green one is ballasted. Oh no, sorry, yeah, only one of them, but the AS33, the, the, the three LS4 flights and one AS33 flight and the AS3, AS33, which is, um, I know this is a bit confusing, but the, the black line, if I put the lines back on the map, the black line has a white glider, okay? Because actually, it's the, if, you only learn, if you only load one glider, it's going to come up with the black line and it's going to be white. So you just get used to that. It's a different, you know, I wanted to have a one white glider, but I couldn't draw a white line. Uh, you can see the AS33 creaming the rest of these three gliders. Um, it doesn't need a turn, doesn't need a circle at all. It's um, able to dolphin through the lift, um, fully ballasted. And the green glider, that is an LS4, but I noted in the name of the file when I saved it, is it's ballasted, um, but actually, um, I got a bit better at it and uh, this red glider is dry. It's flying without ballast, but I'm just flying better than I did when I was flying that one. And uh, you'll see when they, this has all been, you can choose how fast you want to speed this up. But when we get to here, if you can see on the green trace, this, this ballasted glider is actually running out of height. Um, and the empty glider beats it. Okay, so uh, there you go. Mega Racing says the animations, there's the fact you can load track locks in the first place, the fact that you can you can zoom in both on the map and you can zoom in by dragging the mouse on the chart. You can look at, there you go, see the, the red glider. That's this dry one. It's just zipped by. Um, so if I do a bit of a reset, last thing I'll show is in gliding in every country, there are custom waypoints, especially for gliding. And those things are stored in CUP files that you can get on the internet. And there is a link in help. The help on here has been radically improved. It's this button top right. And uh, you'll see what that's about when, take, say I take the British gliding approved waypoints. I'm dragging it and dropping it. It's a .cup file. Okay. And, uh, this is simply saying it has loaded those waypoints, haven't appeared on the map yet. It's saying, do you want the task planner to remember these waypoints so that they appear each time you now use it from, from now on? And I'll say, yes. Okay, and these are these waypoints. So here's an example of one. They're all in, you know, the bridge, all waypoints are somewhere distinctive. So this is there's a waypoint there. I don't know if you can see the red dot. Um, and it's the M1, M6 motorway junction, highway junction. Okay, and that is a very distinctive thing to see from the air. There's another one over here, which is some other intersection. Um, if I completely refresh the browser, you'll see these things come back. They've been stored locally, effectively in a cookie or the equivalent of a cookie. But if you want, you can, these custom waypoints, you're not stuck with them. You can go into settings, you'll find them at the bottom. Okay, and see this option load on startup. I can disable it, close the settings and they've gone. But they're actually still there if I do enable them, but they won't be loaded. Um, but if I go load, there you go, they've come back. 